Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on knowing exact trigonometric ratios. Now if in your calculator you were to say write sine of 30 degrees, so I do sine of 30 and press equals, making sure your calculator is in degrees mode, there should be a little d at the top of your calculator and press equals, we find it's 0.5 or half. Whereas usually when we do, say, I don't know, cos or tan, let's do cos of 53 degrees, and I press equals, I just get some long decimal, 0.601815. So there seems to be certain angles that when you either do sine of it or cos of it or tan of it, you get something nice. Your calculator gives you some nice exact result, might have a square root in it, but it's not some kind of long decimal that it can't represent exactly. And these are known as exact trigonometric ratios. Now there's certain ones you're expected to know, and we get them by considering different shapes. Now, this is shape one to consider, where you consider a unit square. By unit, I just mean that the lengths are one. Now, we want to end up with a triangle because trigonometry involves triangles. So if you just split it diagonally in half like that, what would be that diagonal of this unit square? Well, we can use Pythagoras. If we just make that h, then using Pythagoras, we have the shorter length squared plus the other shorter length squared equals a hypotenuse squared. And then that's one squared plus one squared is two. So h is the square root of two. So let's just make that the square root of two. And what are the angles in this triangle? Well. If that's 90 degrees and this is an isosceles triangle, then these must each be 45. So that would be a 45 degree angle. Now, if we've got these lengths and we've got this angle 45 degrees, we can then find out what sine of 45, cos of 45 and tan of 45 is. So if we just label the sides relative to this particular angle, this side is opposite to that angle. So that's O. This side is a hypotenuse because it's the longest length, which is always opposite the right angle. And then the side which is adjacent to, next to the angle of interest, we label as the adjacent, so a little a. I tend to put these in circles. Now let's use these to work out sine of 45, cos of 45, and tan of 45. Now if we think back to Sokotoa, when we learned about trigonometry, that allows us to work out what sides we involve. Sine of 45, there's a sign, involves opposite over hypotenuse. So it's the opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is one over root two. So sine of 45 is one over root two. If you put sine of 45 in your calculator, it will actually say root two over two, which is actually the same as this. They rationalize the denominator of that. If you don't know what's meant by rationalizing the denominator, I have a separate video on that, but don't worry about that for now. Cos of 45, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so a over h, so a one over h root two, so it's one over root two again. So cos of 45 is one over root two. And finally, tan of 45 is o over a, which is one over one, which is just one. So tan of 45 is one. And if you've got a calculator, we can verify that. Tan of 45 equals one. So we've got our first value, sine 45, cos 45, tan 45. So 45 degrees is like a key angle in trigonometry because it gives us these nice exact values. Now, the other shape we consider is an equilateral triangle of side two. Now again, we need a right angle triangle in order to be able to use trigonometry. So I'm going to split this in half and let's consider the other sides. Well, that bottom side there is half of two, which is one. And then if we use Pythagoras again, I'm just going to do it quickly in my head. You get the square root of two squared minus one squared. That's root three. So that height of this triangle is root three. And what about the angles? Well, it's an equilateral triangle. Each angle in an equilateral triangle is a third of 180, so it's going to be 60. So that's 60 degrees, that's 60, that top angle is 60. And then because these three angles add up to 180 degrees, those two add up to 150, so that final angle is 30. And now, because we've got angles of 30 and 60 here, we can find out sine of 30, cos of 30, tan of 30, sine of 60, cos of 60, tan of 60. So let's do each. We'll do the 30 ones first. So if we label the sides relative to the 30 degrees, well, this is adjacent to that 30. This is a hypotenuse, the 2, and then this is opposite the 30. So then sine of 30 is 
O over H, 1 over 2. So sine of 30 is half. Cos of 30 is A over H, adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's root 3 over 2. And then finally, tan of 30 is O over A, so like a toa. So it is 1 over root 3. So there we go, we've got the 30s. And then let's just write out the triangle separately to get the 60s, so we can relabel these sides. So we've got the 60 degrees, I'm, writing, I'm drawing this triangle here. And then we've got the 2, which was the hypotenuse. Then we've got the root 3, which this time, because it's opposite the 60, the opposite is now here rather than the adjacent. And then this bottom side is adjacent to the 60, so that length of 1 that we had here is now the adjacent. And let's do the same thing. So we want sine of 60, cos of 60, tan of 60. Now sine of 60 is O over H, so O over H is root 3 over 2. Cos of 60 causes A over H, so A over H is half. So you can see it's the same as here, but swap round. And then finally, tan of 60 is O over A, so O over A, root 3 over 1, which is root 3. And there we go. These are all the key trigonometric ratios we need to know. So you need to know it for 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees. And I encourage you to memorise those if you can. But if you do forget, then you can just draw out either unit square or half of an equilateral triangle of length 2.